Good morning, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with you and bringing you a daily devotional, this time borrowing from A.W. Tozer, Aiden Wilson Tozer. It's called The Set of the Sail, and it's a collection of his writings and reflections. Uh, he was a pastor and author of over 40 books, pastor for 44 years, I believe, 30 years of which he served in Chicago. Uh, Christian Missionary Alliance Church guy, and just a really awesome sage. Love his Bible teaching over the years, and uh, his book, uh, The Pursuit of God, is a book, The Knowledge of the Holy. These have been amazing books, uh, really powerful. This has short, the set of the sale has uh, short little essays in it, and the first one, first chapter, is the title essay. I'd like to read that for us this morning. begins with a poem by Ella Wheeler, Wilcox, and he's just going to talk about being intentional in our faith. He says that religion lies in the will as an axiom of theology. Uh, not how we feel, but what we will determines our spiritual direction. An old poem states it for us, and this is the poem by Wilcox. One ship drives east and another drives west with the selfsame winds that blow. Tis the set of the sails and not the gales which tells us the way to go. Though we do not hear much of it in this age of spineless religion, there's nevertheless much in the Bible about the place of moral determination in the service of the Lord. Jacob vowed a vow, and it was the beginning of a very wonderful life with God. The following years brought a great many vicissitudes, and Jacob did not always acquit himself like a true man of God, but his early determination kept him on course, and he came through victorious at last. Daniel purposed in his heart, we're told in the scriptures, and God honored his purpose. Jesus set his face like a flint and walked straight toward the cross. Paul determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And in that determined spirit ignored the learned philosophers. He preached a gospel that was accounted foolishness and earned himself a reputation for ignorance, though he was easily the greatest brain of his generation. <laughs> I love Tozer. Tozer would know this too. He was uneducated, didn't go to seminary, never finished, and just had an uh, amazing impact for God and for the gospel. He goes on to say, these are only a few of the many men and women of the Bible who have left us a record of spiritual greatness, born out of a will firmly set to do the will of God. They did not try to float to heaven on a perfumed cloud, but cheerfully accepted the fact that, quote, with purpose of heart, they must cleave unto the Lord, end quote. In the kingdom of God, what we will is accepted as what we are. If any man will, said our Lord, let him. God does not desire to destroy our wills, but to sanctify them. In that terrible, wonderful moment of surrender, it may be that we feel that our will has been forever broken, but such is not the case. In his conquest of the soul, God does not destroy any of its normal powers. He purges the will and brings it into union with his own, but he never breaks it. In the diaries of some of God's greatest saints will be found vows and solemn pledges made in moments of great grace when the presence of God was so real and so wonderful that the reverent worshiper felt he dared to say anything, to make any promise with the full assurance that God would enable him to carry out his holy intention. The self-confident and irresponsible boast of a Peter is one thing and is not to be confused with the hushed and trustful vow of a David or a Daniel. Neither should Peter's embarrassing debacle dissuade us from making vows of our own. The heart gives character to our pledges, and God knows the difference between an impulsive promise and a reverent declaration of intention. Let us then set our sails in the will of God. 
If we do this, we will certainly find ourselves moving in the right direction, no matter which way the wind blows. One ship drives east and another drives west with the selfsame winds that blow. Tis the set of the sails and not the gales, which tells us the way to go. Let me pray for us. Lord, today I pray that we would set our sails towards you. Lord, that we would have our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, um, who for the joy set before him, uh, left the comforts of heaven, came and endured the cross that he might purchase my salvation, our salvation. So Lord, uh, let us cheerfully set our sails in the direction of our Savior, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey. Thank you.